Hello everyone and welcome to Edu Search Clinics. Today we are back on our console. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai. And as always, we will first see the case. I will scroll through the images. You can try and identify most of the findings. And then we will discuss the case and we will also tell you on what we did finally for the patient. So let us see the scan. As always, try to identify the face and the findings. And go up again. Just a hint for those who have not identified the findings, this is the area of interest. Right? To simplify it, we will also share the coronal images. Okay, so I think fairly easy case this time because uh, a lot of findings are very clear and very prominent in this case. So let us go through them one by one. So as I always say, look at the scans on the console. The most important point that we want to highlight in this series that you have to look at the scans on the console with your radiologist so that you don't miss out on points and both of you can understand what the other wants, right? And the reporting improves and the surgical outcomes also improve, okay? So not many points for guessing. The stomach is over distended that all of us can see, right? Why is it over distended is what we have to find out, right? So there is gastric outlet obstruction. Now, the pancreas looks normal, right? This is the pancreas. This is the duodenum, okay? And you can see that going up, this is the area where there is a lesion, isn't it? So, there is a lesion. Now, you can see this is the enteroduodenal area and there is thickening in this area, okay? So, this is essentially the lesion that is causing all the problem, the gastric outlet obstruction. Probable clips in this area or a stone, okay. But what is important is that there are lesions outside the intestine, okay. There are some lesions that are outside the intestine. Look at this. There is a deposit, right. So, there are tumor deposits beyond the surgical area. You can see this. This entire area is tumor deposits on the diaphragm. Okay, so there are tumor deposits away from the primary tumor. So this is stage 4 disease. Okay, this shagginess in the omentum and mesentery makes it stage 4 disease. Okay, you can see this. So this is all disease, right? So first and the foremost point that you need to understand in this case is there is disease beyond the T stage. So there is, this is a stage 4 disease. Okay, you can see these nodules. So that point is clear. Here in this area, the lesion looks operable. The plane with the pancreas is free. You can see the plane with the pancreas. It is extending into the duodenum, right? But what is more interesting is these areas. Okay, you can see there is no left portal vein, right? If you miss that, see it again. 
I always say that you miss out on points that are away from your area of interest. So I always start from periphery to inside or from inside to periphery. So don't focus your area only on the tumor and its relations. Also look at other problems. So there is no left portal vein. Actually, the entire left liver lobe is atrophied and there is pneumobilia. Right? There is a lot of air in the bile ducts. What that means is that the left hepatic duct is involved by the tumor or the common but left more likely because the right hepatic duct is not even visible right so the pneumobilia is limited only to the left lobe area so this patient has left hepatic duct which is definitely involved by the lesion right so so far we have seen no opacification of the left portal vein pneumobilia in the left ducts and the left sectors of liver mass in the duodenal area okay essentially in d1 and antrum area free from the pancreas pancreas is free you can see this is the bile duct portal vein so on the side of portal vein is the bile duct and you can see that the area where the duct would bifurcate right this is the left duct and this is where the air starts so the left duct is involved by the tumor right you can see the tumor eating up the left hepatic duct right so that is there and there are metastatic lesions beyond the tumor right so this is definitely m1 okay t4 t4 m1 now we look at nodal disease is there any nodal disease there are some small nodes in this area but does not look very prominent right small nodes but not very prominent but this is m1 disease t4 this patient is going to need a biopsy okay followed by chemotherapy first then we reassess and then we plan surgery so now the things are very clear in uh, stomach cancer or duodenal cancer that we don't operate unless we get an R0, right? Palliative surgeries are no longer warranted unless the patient has an outlet obstruction like this where the scope cannot go beyond the tumor, okay? If the scope cannot go beyond the tumor and if we cannot feed the patient, then the patient may need an access for feeding but if an access to feeding can be managed without a surgery, then the patient ideally goes for downstaging. Okay. So that is the treatment plan for these kind of cases. Just to highlight what we have seen on the coronal images, you can again see the peritoneal disease. Okay. Look at this area. The peritoneal disease. These are the nodules. Okay, the nodule, lot of nodules in that area. This is entirely the over distended stomach, the gastric, out, gastric outlet obstruction. This is where the disease is, that's the bile duct. Okay, and as it goes up, pneumobilia, which means that the tumor has eaten up the left hepatic duct, right? You can see the portal vein going into the right lobe, but there is no left portal vein, right? There is no left portal vein. So left portal vein is involved, left hepatic duct is involved. The disease is eating up the bile duct and there are metastatic deposits with gastric outlet obstruction. So what we do is we decompress the stomach first, okay? We put a Riles tube or a nasogastric tube decompress the stomach with lavage okay try for endoscopy see if the tube can be passed beyond sometimes in these cases the tube can go across into the jejunum then you can feed otherwise the patient needs a feeding jejunostomy okay to maintain nutrition and once that is done we start the patient on neoadjuvant chemotherapy and then we take it from there okay no role of palliative rejection now in these kind of cases. So that is what this case is all about.
Okay, so see your scans with your radiologist on the console because these kind of points can be missed. Okay, if this patient only had disease in this area, a radical surgery may have helped. But with peritoneal disease, the plan changes. So that is what is important in these kind of cases. Okay, so that is all that we need to discuss in this case. Thank you.